and gentlemen, now please welcome me, allow me to extend a warm welcome to our chief guest, H.E. Tipu Munshi, MP Commerce Minister of Bangladesh. Please welcome him to, on the stage. Joining us as our guest of honors, H.E. Michelle Sewers, Vice Minister of Foreign Economic Relations, Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Kingdom of Netherlands. H.E. <laughs> Shahriar Alum, MP, State Minister for Foreign Affairs of Bangladesh. H.E. M. Riyaj Hamidullah, Ambassador of Bangladesh to the Netherlands. Mr. Siddiqur Rahman, Trade and Industry Affairs Secretary of Bangladesh Aomi League, the ruling party of Bangladesh and former president of Bangladesh Gov Government's Manufacturer and Exporters Association, BGMEA. <laughs> Ms. Leslie Johnstone, CEO of Lourdes Foundation. Mr. Pallak Shait, Founder and Executive Vice President, PDS Limited. Mr. Mustafizuddin, Founder and CEO, Bangladesh Apple Exchange. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in round of applause as we speakers walk to the stage. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, at this juncture, we are privileged to hear from a visionary who has played a pivotal role in bringing us all together today. May I kindly request Mr. Mosafizuddin for his welcome remarks. Please, sir, come to the stage and give us your speech. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning to everyone. Uh, for many of you, this may be occasion for me. It's a dream which uh, I was thinking last 15 years, and uh, I would like to I would like to congratulate my honourable State Minister, Mr. Shariar Alam, our honourable Minister of Trade and Commerce, Mr. Tipu Munshi, our Minister from Netherlands, Vice Minister, uh, Mr. Siddiqur Islam and Leslie Johnson, and His Excellency Riyaj Hamidullah. Actually, our all exhibitors who came from 8,000 kilometers away in this occasion, I would like to convey my gratitude to them. Representatives from bands and retailers, development partners, NGO, and all other dignities who is present in this hall, I would like to convey my heartful gratitude to all of you. Words are not enough to say how, how much thankful I am. And I will say to you that we've been working for development, branding of this industry last 15 years. Today is our first occasion outside Bangladesh, in Europe. I was a bit nervous uh, what will be happened. It's still a little bit nervous, but I'm also very happy. I would also like to thanks to the Embassy of Netherlands in Bangladesh. You guys are very great. Been working with you last 14 months. Uh, all of you, without your support and help, it would not possible. The last thing I would like to say about my team, the great team I'm having. It was a very difficult journey for us. We are from Bangladesh, coming here, making our first event. Last 14 months, the team had traveled several times in, in Holland. We had a lot of sleepless night from my teams. I would say thank you to you guys. You guys get a great job. And finally, I will say that we have a lot of activities today. We have six panel discussions. We have a fashion show, fashion show by Pacific Jeans. Uh, they will be showing the latest uh, sustainable development. I'm also very grateful, very grateful to PDS, Mr. Pollock Shed, 
He's been supporting this event throughout the last 14 months. Sometime night, 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock, he sent me a message. Do you need anything, Mustafiz? Do you need anything? I need this kind of word from you. The last thing I would like to say when I was dreaming this event, everybody used to ask me, Mustafiz, can you do this? And every time I used to say, yes, I can. But inside night, I had many sleepless nights. I will request rather than these questions, you guys should say to me, Mustafa, you can do it. And I have many more things to offer to this industry, this country, and all of you. I'm very committed, and I like to work for this industry. And my country, my country, Bangladesh. <laughs> my, my last word, I would like to take the opportunity to say in front of our honorable ministers. In 2014, I attended an exhibition here and I put a small flag of Bangladesh in my stand. I got a big letter from the organizer. They said that you are not here alone. There are 34 countries. You cannot put a flag. Today I put a big flag in the hall. That was my dream last 10 years. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you so much. You guys mean a lot. I'm very, very grateful to all of you. Very grateful, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mustafi Suddin, for your dedication to showcase the best of Bangladesh. Thank you so much. Now, may I kindly request Mr. Pollock Shait, founder and executive vice chairman of PDS Limited, to share a few words. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Beautiful day in Amsterdam. It's an honor and privilege for me to be part of the Best of Bangladesh event. And I congratulate the Kingdom of Netherlands, the government of Bangladesh, and the Bangladesh Apparel Exchange on this momentous occasion. It is the sheer energy, passion, and drive of Mustafa to make this happen. As I said, as he was saying, you know, last uh, 12 months he's been talking about it, and it's amazing. I was seeing the forecast even yesterday, but he put it together in an amazing manner. So thank you, Mustafa, for organizing this great event. Bangladesh, in the last decade, has developed a very positive business environment. Right? A lot of the reasons behind that has been the stable government, which is focused on growth and inclusion in the country. There's been continuous development on infrastructure projects in Bangladesh. We can see a lot of development as we enter go to Bangladesh now. You can see a lot of the ports being developed, the airports, the railways. So that's helped the country move forward. But the most important factor where we see in the last decade is the human capital development. In the past, you know, there were a lot of people from outside the country that had to develop the country. But now the people in Bangladesh, their sheer energy, drive, passion to move the country forward is visible. And that's what taking the whole country forward as well. I want to thank the Honorable Commerce Minister, Mr. Tuipu Munshi, for helping creating a positive business environment. And also thank the Honorable Foreign State Minister, Mr. Shahir Alam, for facilitating foreign companies to work seamlessly in Bangladesh. So EU and Bangladesh relationships in the last decade have been healthy and stable based on mutual trust and respect. EU is Bangladesh's largest trading partner, and the GSP benefits that European Union provided to Bangladesh has moved the country forward and helped elevate millions of people out of poverty to the next level. What happened in China many years ago has happened in Bangladesh. You know, we can talk about all the negatives, but you know, millions of people have been able to improve their lives, go from sheer poverty, going to factory with the right standards, with the right health and safety standards, and moving the whole industry forward to the extent <laughs> My friend, you know, I'm originally from India, right? Bangladesh and West Bengal are two paths. In West Bengal, not even one single industry exists, right? The whole industry is being destroyed. Look at Bangladesh, how millions and millions of people are in employment moving forward. Let's look at the positives. As a company, we believe in equal opportunity. We are in 25 countries. So we see the positive of Bangladesh, how they're investing in circularity, sustainability. The entrepreneurs have a positive mindset, the willingness to listen and learn. If you go to some of the other countries, you know, where the sourcing happens, they don't even listen to anyone and see what to do. But at least this is a country where, you know, people have the right mindset. And that's why people like Mustafa and the ministers here are thinking positively. You know, we are a foreign company operating in Bangladesh. We see so many benefits. So yes, there are issues, there are problems. We can identify things. But we've got to look at the larger picture, right? How millions and millions of people have improved their life, family, children. So let's focus on the positives also. You know, there are a lot of negatives in life, but I think we should look at the glass not half empty, but glass half full. 
So just continuing, you know, PDS is a global manufacturing sourcing operation. We believe in trust transparency with all stakeholders. We work with large retailers and brands. Yes, our industry has a lot of problems, but you know, we try our best to make sure we work with all stakeholders with full transparency and for the best interest of all stakeholders, right? We run the company on three balance sheets, trust, transparency, and you know, capability. So the important thing is like not taking a view which is one-sided. So what are the key advantages you know, from a global sourcing organization we see in Bangladesh, right? I almost identify six when I compare to many other countries. So first is the people, right? There's a lot of entrepreneurship. The entrepreneurs in the country want to move the country forward. They're embracing change, and they're investing in the sector. Some of the factories in Bangladesh are the most modern and the most transparent. Every retailer and brand has full visibility where the goods are being made and in what conditions, right? Many other countries, you will not find that. And that's why if my customers come and tell us, tell us what's happening with the supply chain, I said, in Bangladesh, I can give you transparency. There will be issues, but at least they're visible. And many other sourcing destinations around the world, it's difficult to give you that level of transparency. So let's look at that positively, right? <laughs> the workers, right? The workers value the job. Again, you know, we've invested in manufacturing in Bangladesh. We had option to do that in other countries. If you open a factory, right, there are a lot of people standing in line to get jobs. If this industry was so horrible, and right, and if they were not having the right working environment, why would people want to come and enter those factories for the jobs, right? They're getting paid. Yes, there's a room for improving minimum wages. PDS also works on living wage with a lot of our customers, how to work on that and embrace it. It's an industry issue, right? It's a retailer, supplier, government. Everyone has to work together in partnership. But the reality is, if the workers today are in the unorganized sector, they are not having the right you know, social benefits. But if they are working with the big brands and retailers in these factories, which the retailers are you know, doing the audits and gov governance for, Accord Alliance, the factory standards are good and the workers have a good life. They are elevating from poverty, you know, getting better life for their kids and the family as well. So the benefits the factories are offering, fair price shops for food, you know, free meals, and all the double wages, it's world class. So the industry is what it is, but Bangladesh is actually doing good things about the worker welfare and well-being. And that's why workers value their job. The government support, right? So again, when we as a foreign company went into Bangladesh, we've not had much problem. The EPZs have been established. There's good power supply. So the infrastructure is being developed. The ports are being developed. So it takes time, right? It's a, like a least developed country. But at least we see things moving, right, in the right direction, which is good. Banking, right? Many countries have not been able to develop their own garment sector because of lack of banking support. Bank, Bangladesh, a lot of good banks, which is providing the financing is the lifeblood of the industry. So, you know, that's also very important. Because many other countries where apparel manufacturing happens, there's no banking infrastructure. So they're almost controlled from China. China does all the financing. They just use those for basically CM factories. But Bangladesh is able to finance the entire supply chain. Investment in sustainability and green initiatives, right? Bangladesh has got 200 green factories, the most amount in the world. All the latest technology that's emerging around the world, even if you look at you know, the, all the funds that are coming around the world, for them to invest, Bangladesh is probably the easiest place because the factory owner's attitude is there. Let's embrace change, let's embrace the technology, let's invest, and let's move the industry forward. So which is a positive, you know? So, and finally, a lot of movement happening on circularity. So even there, you know, the whole circularity movement that we are seeing, Bangladesh is playing the leading role. So I'm coming from a perspective, 15 countries sourcing and manufacturing. We feel Bangladesh is moving the right direction. Yes, there are issues, but let's look at things in a positive manner and you know, let's work with what the current scenario and environment is to make the best out of it. So that was some few points. And finally, I want to thank Mustafa and Bangladesh Apparel Exchange for organizing this wonderful event and hope next two days are productive and we have a lot of positive discussions, talk about some of the issues, but find solutions to them. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Pollock uh, for sharing your wonderful thoughts with us and your positive thought with us. Uh, now I will kindly uh, request to the podium Ms. Leslie Johnstone, Johnstone, CEO of Loris Foundation, to say a few words. I'm really sorry. Great, thank you. And it's really wonderful to be here. Um, I'm the uh, head of the, C um, oh, I almost said CNA Foundation, Loudest Foundation, which is a new incarnation, but we've been working in the apparel industry for many, many years. And 
I think one thing I wanted to say is, is for us, Bangladesh is such an important geography for our work. Actually, between ourselves and our sister foundation, Porticus, we're the only global foundations with local offices and local staff in the country working to do things like improve working conditions for workers. So let me just say a few words about why we're doing this, why we're excited about Bangladesh, and what we see for the future. So a few words. We've invested about 25 million in grants in Bangladesh, and that's very much been focused on how do we actually improve the worker rights in the factories, how do we accelerate circularity in the industry, how do we actually accelerate the sustainability of the industry that needs to happen. At the same time, we know that we are in a challenging situation in many ways. We're in a climate crisis, some would even say it's a polycrisis moment, and I think what's exciting to me about Bangladesh is its focus on climate prosperity. Because in crisis, there is an opportunity to create green jobs, an inclusive economy, and create better livelihoods for workers and their families. So that's very exciting, and we're inspired by the vision of the government and the private sector in trying to make that happen. What are we doing in Bangladesh? Well, I mentioned we've, we've invested about 25 million in grants, including setting up a uh, fund that you'll hear a little bit about later. Um, but in addition to that, we have a couple flagship programs that we're very excited about. So I think in light of the earlier discussion and the dialogue that we should have, one program that we have is how can we lift up women, um, garment workers, to basically advocate for their rights and to help be part of the solution in creating better working conditions in factories. This is a program that's run by Awaj Foundation, which is a fantastic local organization, many of you may know. Um, and they've really been working to essentially help workers come together and especially women um, lead the change that we wanna see. We're also doing a lot of work around increasing transparency in the industry. It's a very exciting time because Bangladesh is the first producing country that has digitized its production base. That's the Mapped in Bangladesh program. It's very exciting because with transparency becomes accountability. Um, and so those leaders will continue to rise, but it also creates an opportunity for those that maybe aren't as transparent in their practices to improve. Um, and we're seeing that already, which is quite exciting. So what would I like to see as a leader of a foundation is that there's a number of things that we really feel need to be addressed. Um, of course, there's topics that we can talk about in the dialogue, but ultimately, if we're gonna move toward climate prosperity and inclusive economy, we need investment, public and private sector. We need the business leaders to step up, which they are doing, and we also need people to be at the center. In fact, everything that we do as a philanthropic foundation that works with business is putting people at the center of the work that we do. So. Looking forward, I think this is a really important event because it's a time for us to come together and actually talk about what does it take for Bangladesh to accelerate um, its journey. We're very indebted to Mustafitz, who's been really the, the brainchild behind this, um, have partnered with him for many, many years. And I hope that the topics that come up today, the panels, the discussion, the deeper dives in sustainable supply chains can spark some inspiration but more importantly, can spark some action. So thank you all, and very happy to be here. Thank you so much, Ms. Leslie Johnston, uh, for your wonderful speech and insights. May I now kindly welcome Mr. Siddiqui Rahman, Trade and Industry Affairs Secretary of Bangladesh Awami League, the ruling party of Bangladesh, and former president of Bangladesh Garment Manufacturers and Exporter Association. Thank you, sir. Best Bangladesh, uh, two days program, the chief guest, Mr. Tipu Munshi, MP, Honorable Commerce Minister of Bangladesh, Government of Bangladesh, Mr. Michael Schwerz, Honorable Vice Minister of Foreign Economics Relations, Kingdom of the Netherlands, Mr. Sharir Alam, MP, State Minister of Foreign Affairs, Government of Bangladesh, Republic of Bangladesh. His Excellency, Mr. Riyaz Hamidullah, Ambassador of Bangladesh to the Netherlands. 
Ms. Lacey Johnston, Chief Executive Officer, Lourdes Foundation. Pollock Shet, Founder and Vice Chairman, PDS Limited. Mr. Mustafa Izzuddin, Founder and CEO, Bangladesh Apparel Exchange. Representative from brands and retailers, entrepreneurs from Bangladesh, journalists, ladies and gentlemen, very good morning to all of you. First of all, I would like to thank the organizer of Best of Bangladesh, Bangladesh Apparel Exchange, and its founder and CEO, Mustafa Uddin, for the wonderful Made in Bangladesh event in Amsterdam. I am really proud to be a part of this milestone event. Though we have seen some unnecessary we, everybody knows the issues, and our uh, foreign minister will uh, explain. Ladies and gentlemen, Bangladesh is the second largest apparel exporter in the world. The country is also the second largest exporter of the jute and jute products in the world in agro-Bangladesh secured top position in the global ranks for producing fish, rice, potato, and mango. It is the fourth fastest growing digital economics of the world, so the event is a big opportunity to our European friends to find their right business partners here. Europe is the largest exporter des export destination for Bangladesh. Bangladesh export about 60% of our uh, garments are in, in Europe. So European countries, however, there is still big scope to increase Bangladesh export to the Europe. Bangladeshi industries are maintaining highest compliance standard and environmental friendly production process. The apparel in factories in Bangladesh are now a role model in sustainability. There are 200 green garments factories in Bangladesh, least certified by the United States Green Building Council. 500 more garment in factories are waiting in the line to achieve the lead certification. Bangladesh is also focusing to transformation into circular economy, reducing, reusing, and recycling materials in the industries. Bangladesh as a country under the able leadership of our Honorable Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina is making achievements in all area. The government has established 101 special economic zone for investment Bangladesh Investment Development Authority was established to provide foreign investor one-stop service. Our Commerce Minister, Mr. Tipu Munshi MP, and State Minister for Foreign Affairs, Mr. Shariar Alam MP, are here. I believe they will brief you about trade and investment opportunities in Bangladesh. I would like to take this opportunity to invite you all to come to Bangladesh and visit our factories. I can assure you, will, you that uh, you will find all the way from Europe to Bangladesh worth traveling. Long live Bangladesh, long live Bangladesh European partnership. Thank you all. Thank you, Mr. Siddiqui Rahman. Thank you so much. Now, may I kindly request His Excellency Shahriyar Alam, MP, State Minister of Foreign Affairs, Government of the People's Republic of Bangladesh, for his remarks. Thank you. Thank you, Excellency uh, Minister of Commerce, uh, Mr. Thibu, Thibu Munshi, MP. Uh, we have amongst us uh, uh, from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs uh, uh, of Netherlands, uh, Mr. Uh, Michel Suez, 
uh, Ambassador Riaz Hamidullah and uh, the man behind uh, today's event, uh, Mustafiz. Uh, Mr. Pollock Shet, who has been a great supporter of Bangladesh and the industry worldwide. Uh, dear friends uh, from Netherlands and from home and abroad and other parts of Europe, uh, a very good morning uh, to, to all of you. Uh, I think uh, Mustafiz uh, and uh, our uh, another business leader, Mr. Siddiqui Rahman, uh, who is also the, the Commerce Secretary of the ruling party of Bangladesh Awami League, uh, went on to explain. And all of you are very well aware uh, what Bangladesh is today, what it used to be 20 years ago, and what's the aspiration. Uh, this event is taking place at a time when Bangladesh is graduating. Now, graduating is not purely in economic sense, but graduating in all respect. Uh, the social indicators, uh, people who are not aware, Bangladesh came into being 52 years ago, much later than that of neighboring Pakistan and India and other countries in the neighborhood. But we have exceeded uh, our neighbor in many of these fronts, not just on per capita GDP, but also uh, in women empowerment, uh, life expectancy, child mortality at birth. There are many other social indicators where we have done relatively better compared to many our other Asian neighbors. Now, Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina, who happens to be the daughter of founding father of the nation, Bangabundu Sheikh Mujibur Rahman, uh, we keep on mentioning this because that's the way we see uh, when Bangladesh 52 years ago uh, fought a bloody war of liberation, uh, three million people laid down their lives, nearly 300,000 uh, our uh, mothers and sisters and daughters were violated. Uh, the country that dreamt to become a Shunar Bangla, a golden Bengal, and the visionary leadership of Prime Minister's father, Sheikh Mujibur Rahman, went on to dream. And our foreign policy objective was, and still is today, is friendship to all, malice towards none. And when, as the first president of independent Bangladesh, he attended non-aligned movements. Now, most of you are traders and from private sectors and not too much bothered about politics, even though it will uh, one way or another impact you, your business or your, have impacted your past, or if not, will impact in the future. Uh, he famously said that world is divided between the oppressed and the oppressors. And he said that I am on behalf, I am on the side of the oppressed. Uh, that was one of his famous quotes. And as a nation, as a Bangla-speaking nation, we never had a Bangla-speaking president or prime minister or a king, so to speak, because Bangladesh was never independent. So there are many commonalities when UN went on to set out the SDG goals, or prior to that, uh, the Millennium uh, MDG goals. Bangladesh has achieved uh, most of the MDGs ahead of time and the schedule that was agreed in 2000 that we'll have a 15-year journey to achieve it. Now, in 2015, SDG was adopted. Now, all of you are very much well aware of the Sustainable Development Goal. Uh, the reason I mention this is probably the only prime minister of a democratic country who was present at the UN floor when MDG was adopted and MDG uh, balance sheet was drawn in 2015 and SDG was adopted. It was our prime minister, Sheikh Hasina, who was one of the rarest among the prime minister of 194 member states of UN who was present in both the occasions. And we have contributed uh, on behalf of Bangladesh in finalizing the draft of SDG. Now, many of you are aware, and all of you adopted that in your business policy and aspiration, that we want to create a sustainable environment, whatever business we are in, whether it's fashion or manufacturing or food or any large scale or medium scale manufacturing. And that's one of the major pillars of SDG. 
So what I'm trying to say is our own aspiration matches with what global aspiration adopted uh, from the UN floor. Now, uh, just to answer some of the questions raised, I wish the uh, individual uh, who actually raised these questions had a better way to communicate with us because we have communicated with their representatives back in Bangladesh and also in global stage. Bangladesh has signed highest number of human rights instruments compared to any other country that we compete against. I, don't, I cannot name it. I have a responsibility at Ministry of Foreign Affairs, so I'll not be naming countries, but we have ratified by far the highest number of human rights instruments. When it comes to ILO conventions, we are the only country, I repeat, you can go on and do your own research, we are the only country who has ratified all the ILO convention compared to any other competing manufacturing countries. Now, our friends raised a question about Shohidul Islam. I'm coming, I'm coming to that. Shohidul Islam, I, I'll read it out from this record and it's, it's, it's a legal process that's taking place as we speak. Shohidul Islam, belong to my own party, Bangladesh Awami League. He was the workers' representative and the president of Gajipur chapter of that particular labor organization. So it's our loss. We consider any member of my political party as a family, Bangladesh Awami League. He was a joint secretary of a union under Gajipur district. On the very first day of his killing, two person who was involved out of three was immediately taken to custody. They are still behind the bar and a trial is going on. We can assure you that definitely justice will be delivered. But very unfortunately, what I have seen, uh, the newspaper articles, the multiple articles is in my mobile, uh, you know, if anyone wants to, I'm here for the rest of the day. You are uh, welcome to come and talk to me. I'll share this with you, is that uh, for mere political gain, by some uh, politically influenced liberal organization, they claimed that Shoidul belonged to their party, which was very unfortunate, where his widow went on to testify that he, she was approached, he was approached with money to share or falsify his identity or his belongingness to a political party or liberal organization. So friends who are here raising voice on behalf of Shoydul Islam, I would be requesting them to tell the truth, take the fact to the world as well, so that Shoydul Haq doesn't become a tool of mere political gain or personal gains by any section of local or regional or international trade bodies or political parties. We are, as you are very well aware, we have agreed with all the labor unions a set procedure for reviewing the minimum wage. We have had trouble up until 10 years ago. There were chaos, there were shipments delayed, factory closure and riots in the past, but Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina's government told the owner, the entrepreneurs, the factory owner, the trade bodies and everyone else that you will have to come and agree to term to review the minimum wage in a, on a periodic basis, and that's why after every couple of years, there's a fixed procedure, government, every five years, government f reconvenes a committee in, with the presence of someone like Awards Foundation, as Leslie or you know, many of you work with, or similar labor leaders. They are member of the trade, uh, the minimum wage review body, representation from the government, representation from the owners, everyone else, and I'm sure in the Netherlands, in any other countries in the UK, in, in, in the European Union, you go and ask whether you are earning enough. Everyone would say, no, I'll be better off if I earn 20% more. That's the fact of life. But we have done our best and we have a set widely accepted procedure to review the minimum wage. The current board has been reconvened and by November or so, by December. by December, they will announce a minimum wage that everyone will have to comply. And in this process, many of you are aware, 
businesses like that Mr. Pollock Shed runs, or many of you are present here today that I am not aware of, who has been in business 20 years ago with a particular factory or two, they went out of business because they couldn't survive at a higher wage environment. And that's fine with the government, that's fine with us, because we want to challenge our achievements that we have achieved collectively yesterday, because we want to make a better tomorrow. That's the objective, that's the political ambition of Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina, uh, being the uh, surviving daughter of founding father of the nation, Bangamundu Sheikh Mujibur Rahman. Now, when it comes to other uh, environments and achievements, uh, we know the history of the world, roughly. Not all of us went on to the history school or read, had the time to read, whether it's Europe or America or any other parts, whether it's South Asia or Southeast Asia, the way we have polluted our river, the way we have polluted our environment. You know, Bangladesh is trying to do in a much more cleaner manner and way. We have reduced the number of factories from 5,000 to probably 14, 15, 1,700 in the last BGME election. You know, I used to be uh, in business up until 2006 when I joined Active Politics, and I knew that number of voters, members in BGMA was almost 4,000 plus. Now it's being reduced to well below 2,000. Now out of these 14, 1,500 factories, you already know that we have LEED certified green factories over 200. We have seven world's best gold category LEED certified factories. The way we are conducting business in terms of not just paying them in time, reviewing the minimum wage or traceability of the product, no subcontracting. I can safely claim products, especially clothing, made in Bangladesh is probably the cleanest, most textile that you will get in today's world. I am very happy, I'll be very happy, if time permitting, to debate what I just claimed. And I do not think that there are many you know, possibility uh, me uh, concluding otherwise. Uh, there are companies, or as a country, uh, you know, there could be others uh, who can come closer, but compared to the number of factories and the intensity of the production. Now, this is by far the highest sector that employs uh, the e young girls and women and boys. 80% of our foreign earning comes from this sector. Every other Bangladeshi working class is working one or another in textile sector. So if a social crime takes place, anything happens, even a road accident, school enrollment, there's a possibility that one out of three will be one or another involved in textile sector. If there is a murder, if there is a road accident, if there is, you know, whatever, any social issues or crime that we can think of in best of our societies, one way or another, there will be a member of this textile family who will be involved or will be affected or will be on the other side of the table. Now, that's the sheer volume, number of the industry is such that uh, which we cannot avoid. But we believe in rule of law, as I said. Uh, as a Minister of State for Foreign Affairs, I can tell you that uh, we attend um, on a very regular basis all the meetings uh, take place at the Human Rights Council. There's one due known as Universal Periodic Review come November uh, at a very challenging time, just a month ahead of our national election. And the other uh, lady or the gentleman raised a question about uh, the reform of labor law. Uh, I wish that you were a little more informed. It's very important when you are coming here attending and trying to disrupt uh, a well-planned session, you, you'll be better off uh, being a little more prepared. Uh, but I can tell you, share this with you, that we attended the last ILO uh, conference. We have presented a roadmap. We have representation from the political circle or foreign affairs from European Union here. You know, she will be able to uh, give you more detail we have agreed uh, a mechanism for a regular uh, reporting uh, uh, in Brussels, but alongside that, we have made a commitment, a time-bound action plan on the five or six major observations that was given uh, by ILO in the past that Bangladesh will be implementing all those criteria by 2025. And 2025, sitting in 2023, August is like tomorrow, and we have uh, 
ratified, satisfied, achieved majority of those observations already. The individual faction owners, the brands, all of you are aware which are the ones that I am talking about. We are a responsible nation. We are a responsive nation. And I think responsiveness is something where partnership truly flourishes. And Bangladesh will continue uh, to follow that path no matter how difficult uh, it is. Uh, I would like to thank uh, our own ambassador, Riyaj Hamidullah, for putting up this great show. It's not all about garments and textile. We are working really hard to expand our export base. Uh, I had a brief discussion uh, with, with uh, Mitchell Swartz, who will be speaking after me, I hope, uh, from the Minister of Foreign Affairs. We have great cooperation uh, with, with uh, Netherlands uh, for the last five decades. Uh, we both agreed that Bangladesh and Netherlands relationship has moved, if not entirely, from aid to trade. And trade gives us a lot of opportunities. Uh, trade gives us Netherlands and the European Union countries a lot of opportunities to do and expand more. As we all know, uh, like it or not, I would love to uh, remind our European friends that this century is known and called as Asian century. And whatever expansion, innovation uh, is going to take place, it's, it's going to take place in Asia. So Asia is the destination, and within the kind of new Asia, Bangladesh has emerged as, as a new tiger uh, in Asian economy, being the fastest growing economy uh, in the world. I think uh, it's a response, collective responsibility of all the stakeholders and partners to tell the world the truth in our part uh, of the world that goes beyond Bangladesh also. Uh, politics is, the democracy is rather noisy and cumbersome at times. And while we are approaching election, there will be many such incidences that you have observed today you will be observing in coming months. But you have seen worse. People who are operating in Bangladesh for over a decade, you know, you have seen, uh, I think one of the speakers went on to say one of the major reasons Bangladesh came this far is the continuity of the policy and stability of the government provided by Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina's leadership. And I can assure you that we are doing everything possible uh, to make uh, uh, coming election free and fair and once that is over, uh, life will be as usual as it is today. Uh, but a lot of confusions are being created by unauthorized uh, intervention and interferences. Uh, but uh, we, are, we, we are seasoned. Uh, political environment in Bangladesh is matured, and we have weathered many uh, uh, storms uh, in the past that uh, couldn't deter uh, the journey of 170 million people uh, for a prosperous future and uh, a Shonar Bangla as dreamt by founding father of the nation, Bangabundu Sheikh Mujibur Rahman. We are now aspiring to become a higher income country by 2041 and uh, through a smart Bangladesh initiative. I hope today's, uh, uh, today's uh, Best of Bangladesh uh, exposition for next uh, 48 hours through discussion and display of products and services will help us achieve that dream of smart Bangladesh in not so distant future. Thank you uh, all for listening. Uh, thank you once again uh, to all the organizers. Joy Bangla. Joy Bangla. Thank you, Honorable State Minister. Now may I kindly request His Excellency, Michael Sears, Vice Minister of Foreign Economic Relations of the Netherlands, for his remarks. Thank you. Thank you. Distinguished guests, Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, uh, as Vice Minister of Foreign and Economic Affairs, I'm honored to officially welcome you on behalf of our government here in the Netherlands. Minister of Commerce Munshi, State Minister of Foreign Affairs Alam, and the many wonderful companies that have joined them and that have just also, some of them, been shown on a very speedy, high-speed introduction to the exhibition fair here. Our Minister of Foreign Trade would have loved to welcome you herself, but unfortunately, also due to a reshuffle within the Cabinet last Friday, her schedule did not allow to do so. 
I would like to thank the Bangladeshi ambassador, uh, Mustafiz Udin, for organizing this great event and for selecting our country as its location. I know a lot of preparations were involved, so I wish you a fruitful event and many happy returns to Amsterdam. The building where we meet today, I hope, will offer inspiration to the participants of this important event. This building symbolizes how economies and societies continuously need to adapt to the challenges of the future. More than a century ago, this was a power plant. Nowadays, it's a place where our creative sector showcases its talents. Bangladesh has certainly embarked on such a journey Given the amazing economic developments in the past 50 years, the Minister of State just alluded on that. Many countries around the world, including my own, have learned the importance of so many made in Bangladesh products. And I am pleased to note the economic journey of Bangladesh continues. Your country's roadmap, often summarized as best of Bangladesh, provides us great insights into the road ahead. It shows the potential of Bangladesh and your focus on excellence, sustainability, and innovation. I believe Bangladesh's creative sector is a shining example of this transformation. This sector has transformed from a focus on traditional fabrics to a much wider variety, ranging from garments to household furniture and industrial design. Ladies and gentlemen, the Netherlands is honored to have been a long-standing partner of Bangladesh in trade, investment, and development cooperation. We stand ready to tackle the challenges of the future together, and certainly our private sector will be part of this agenda. And on a personal note, and also in response to remarks that have been made previously in this room, uh, the Netherlands has always been an open and trading society. We've been trading, exporting, importing, reinvesting the profits of this trade in manufacturing capacity and exporting again for many centuries now, and it brought us great prosperity. And I think not only for the Netherlands, but also for Bangladesh, this is the way ahead. And of course, we have our issues. Uh, Bangladesh has their issues, we have our own issues, and I strongly believe that apart from trade, also dialogue is needed. Dialogue that we also support with aid, but an open and honest dialogue between countries is, is uh, I think, the way to go forward. So um, I really strongly support trade events like this one today here. So many of our companies are eager to jointly solve these challenges with partners from Bangladesh. So let me mention three areas where we see potential for private sector engagement. First, there's the need and the opportunity to produce sustainable and high quality agricultural and textile products. I just had a conversation with both ministers on these uh, subjects. Second, the need also due to climate change to adapt our waterways and societies to changing weather patterns and sea levels. And this is clearly a challenge both for Bangladesh and the Netherlands. And finally, the ongoing digitization of our economies may come with challenges, but also provides opportunities. For instance, this development offers significant opportunities to deliver affordable health care to our aging and growing population. So, distinguished guests, your excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, these are just a few examples which will allow our economic ties to deepen and to grow in a responsible manner. I wish you a very fruitful, insightful, and inspiring days during the best of Bangladesh, and I'm sure that for Bangladesh, the best is yet to come. Thank you. Thank you so much, Honorable Vice Minister. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, may I kindly invite you to listen to a short video mes message of His Excellency Prof Professor Jan Peter Balkenenti, Minister of State and former Prime Minister, the Kingdom of Netherlands. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, here in my study room in my house in the neighborhood of Rotterdam, I have this book, a very thick book, many pages. And the title of the book is, in Dutch, Watersnood, meaning flood, in English. And this is about something that happened in 1953 in this country. We had a terrible water flood. 
It took the lives of more than 1,800 people. I also lost family members in those days. And then people realized that if you do not invest enough in the quality of dikes and dunes, you will suffer. You must invest in the future. You must have clearly defined policies. And when I'm thinking about what happened in my country, I must say I feel connected with your country, with Bangladesh, because you also had your experiences. You and your people suffered. And it's good to underline the fact that and Bangladesh and the Netherlands, we know what the strength of water is. We both know the, how important it is to invest in water management and quality of water. Water is key for life of people. I'm a big defender of the Sustainable Development Goals of the United Nations. The SDGs connect countries, businesses, universities, NGOs. It's so important to be aware of the fact that you have common responsibilities. Number 17, goal number 17 is called partnerships. And when we talk about water, we need partnerships. We can share knowledge. We can learn from each other. And it's good to be aware of the fact that we have common responsibilities. It's good to underline the fact that we are living on one planet and we need each other. And therefore, I'm so happy we have the excellent ties between Bangladesh and the Netherlands to safeguard the future for people. We need each other. It's so important to invest in water management and quality of water. Let's work together. We need each other, Bangladesh and the Netherlands. Now it's my honor to invite the chief guest, the Commerce Minister of Bangladesh, Mr. Tipu Munshi, MP, to the podium for his valuable remarks. Please welcome, sir. Thank you. I think it is no more good morning, it's afternoon now. <laughs> good afternoon to you, everybody. <coughs> Uh, my cabinet colleague, Shahriya Alam, State Minister, a few minutes back he spoke to you. I think he spoke a lot of things. What was not, I mean, desired, but it happened to Honorable uh, Vice Minister, Mr. Suarez, he also spoke. Uh, our Honorable Ambassador Riaz Hamidullah is also there in the dais. Um, Miss Leslie Johnson, I don't know, I mistake the name. Yeah, it's okay. She's also there. Uh, one of the business leaders from Bangladesh, Siddiqui Rahman, my colleague, is there. Mr. Alok Shet, who is doing big business in Bangladesh, and he spoke about his experience also, you heard. And the man behind, this show, Mustafis, he's also in the ass. Honorable presentees, business people, leaders, participants, welcome to this wonderful meeting, I mean this show. When I reached Amsterdam, little did I imagine of the spectacular way the best Bangladesh in Europe would fly our flag in the heart of the Netherlands. The exhibitors, entrepreneurs, art, Crafts, cinema on display around Cashholder would speak of Bangladesh progress and excellence. Bangladesh has traveled distance in the past half century, emerging from a brutal war of independence and the constraints of our limitations, aspiration, innovation, resilience of the people list as to a stage of stability and robust growth. Little do we realize how our GDP climbed up to, climbed from $8.75 billion in 1972 to $430 billion in 2022? Contemporary Bangladesh st story speaks of visionary leadership in Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina. She brings 15 years unstinted growth in dignity she keeps reminding me that business is about securing profit sharing responsibility towards people and nature that helped us transform our manufacturing factories. Unlike many places in the world, 
thanks to a generation of Bangladeshi entrepreneurs. They confidently scout opportunities in making shirts to ships, medicine to robust, competing globally. I know, I know, now see early sign of regional consolidation and integration connecting South and Southeast Asia. These two days, as you all reflect on excellence, innovation, culture, I'm ready to listen to any of, any from Netherlands and Europe on how you view potential in Bangladesh, how you plan to engage and further collaboration with us. Rest assured, Bangladesh is ready to work that talk openly and responsibility as a middle income country. Here I want to say something about, I mean, the Vice Minister also spoke about some investment. They have prioritized three sectors. I would request them, that's fine, but see some other also the possibilities over there. Before coming here, we had a discussion with the Honorable Vice Minister. I requested them to come and see Bangladesh. It's 170 million people. The fortune is there, the good luck should be there. Mr. Alokshit, he saw the success, he saw the possibilities and, and how he came up to this big level, I mean, such a certain level. And I requested also, and he also confirmed that, yes, the Netherlands people, if they go, if they see their position now, because from outside you can hear a lot of things, but when you go and see the situation, the changing days, now how Bangladesh is now uh, prepared for to welcome the people, you will find, you will find that Bangladesh is a very good place, better place now for the investment. We have not only 170 million people, we have more than 280 billion people around us, which is India and China, and we have the scope to export our goods to that countries also. So, Bangladesh is a place to invest in these different, different sectors. Though we are very successful in the ready-made garment sector, I am also from that sector. I'm a businessman. And 40 years back, I started my garment factory also. And 20 years back, I was also president of that garment organization, BGABA. So we have crossed long, long way, and now we came up to this level. And you heard about the success of this sector, how the green factories, how the gold platinum factories are coming up. So these are not only in garment sector, there are some other sectors also you can come, especially leather sector, jute product, jute sectors, like machineries, pharmaceuticals, ICT, all these sectors you can invest, you can come and try to see these things. So my request will be the business people, the investors to come and see. Don't listen from outside, Just come and see. Verify on your own and take, then take decision what is in Bangladesh. Our state minister was supposed to talk you something else, but scenario was had come, so he had to speak something else. No choice, but he had long, lot, we had, we discussed, he had a lot of things to discuss. So the, the salary thing came, you know, one thing I want to mention here, every five years we are reviewing these things, government is there, our honorable prime minister is very much supportive of these workers, labor workers, especially women. It's not only five years. There are every year there is some increment also. So that is also set in the uh, agreement. So uh, th now it is the total global scenario has changed. Maybe little pressure has came. Within next December, the new salary is coming up. And he, our honorable uh, by, uh, state minister spoke to you. A lot of things what he, what he told about this question, what came today in the meeting. So, so please do come see Bangladesh is a different Bangladesh now under the leadership of our Honorable Prime Minister. And 2026, we'll be graduating from the lower income group, the middle income group. So that's, that is not there, they have give, allow it. So there's some reason should be there. So please do come invest in Bangladesh. Um, Mustafis, the young guy, he, he did a wonderful job. I should appreciate him and it's wonderful this showcase he made and he told me the more than a year he's trying he's working hard he, not only here in bangladesh also he every year he's doing all this 
this type of showcase and all these things. He's wonderful and very energetic and hope to see in future in a great position. Thank you. Thank you all till he's hearing me. My final thing to request you, please see Bangladesh. Come to Bangladesh. Invest in Bangladesh because the speaker at that he says Bangladesh and Netherlands can work together, I think, for a greater world, greater Bangladesh and for, for both our of our interests. Thank you. Thank you you all to hear me. Thank you so much, Honorable Minister, for your valuable speech. And now, Honorable Guest, ladies and gentlemen, may I kindly request you to a short video of Bangladesh Apple Exchange to learn about the experience of their nine years journey. Please enjoy. Bangladesh Apparel Exchange, the largest private apparel initiative in Bangladesh. Promoting sustainable growth in Bangladesh's apparel industry. Let's take a look back at our journey of nine years. Bangladesh Denim Expo, the first denim trade show, serving as a global denim network unlike any other. Sustainable Apparel Forum, a knowledge sharing and networking platform with the prime focus on facilitating green solutions and sustainable manufacturing. Denim Innovation Night First ever denim focused innovative fashion show Highlighting the capabilities of Bangladesh in innovative design Bangladesh Fashionology Summit The ultimate platform for discovery Networking Learning Providing the scope to learn about The cutting edge developments in the apparel and textile industries Bangladesh Circular Economy Summit a platform that enables industries to apply circular economy principles and design circular solutions. Made in Bangladesh Week, one of the largest events focusing on the Bangladesh apparel industry. The week-long event focused on various aspects of our sustainable initiatives. Through various events like Dakar Apparel Summit, Dakar Apparel Expo, Green Factory Visits and so on continuously striving to contribute to society, raise industry awareness, and demonstrate our focus on sustainability, security, and transparency. Our events have garnered huge attention from all over the world, attracting 85,000 plus national and international participants from 50 plus countries, 650 plus delegates, and 2,000 plus companies until now. Looking ahead, we will continue extending our reach beyond borders to promote the capacity and capabilities of our RMG industry as we have done for nine years. For us, the journey of revolutionizing the apparel industry of Bangladesh has just started. Join us and be part of the exciting future that we build together. As you all know that without the direct support of the Embassy of Bangladesh to the Netherlands, this e event would have been not been possible. So it's an honor to invite His Excellency Aim Riyaj Hamidullah, Ambassador of Bangladesh to the Netherlands, to deliver the closing remarks of the inaugural ceremony. Thank you, sir. Uh, Excellencies, uh, distinguished ministers, uh, panelists, and friends, uh, exactly last August, uh, who is, uh, I met the senior official who led a Dutch delegation for the next three-year strategy, Bangladesh-Netherlands cooperation. She has now proceeded to Washington as the Dutch ambassador, a formidable lady, I call her. And I asked her when she came back from Dhaka, I said, how was Dhaka? And I was scared. I thought that she would be complaining about traffic, or busy, she said, but said, Riaz, it's all about vibes. I went to bazaars, streets, villages, and I was surprised. Uh, many things I was told, but I was surprised. Professor. A Nobel laureate, Professor Sen, was asked, uh, how do you uh, look at the country? She said, he said, I'm still looking for a perfect country. There's no per thing called perfect country in the world. So imperfections or perfection is something, part of a life that we live with, and I think we better understand and accept. 
A uh, couple of things coming at the fag end, and I know that we have to wait for the next move. I think a couple of things I'll ask which Google may not may tell you. One, uh, I often say that this is an odd relationship. Here is the 16th largest country, economy, Netherlands. Fifth largest in the Europe. We are 35th. We are aspiring to go but. But quite often I ask Bangladesh, I mean the friends in Dutch, I try to tease them, Mr. Minster. And I say, I said, it's not an odd relationship. We connect because of the can-do spirit. And also, it's a mutuality of interest that drives us. So please get it right. As much as you heard, you might have think that this is about a lot of April. This is about what we have done in the past. No. This is this point in gas holder. We have to make a statement. This, or a couple of statements. I can see from our view, CBI and many other partners, it's about listening to Bangladesh, understanding what truly is Bangladeshi DNA. So please get it right. This ramp is for fashion. This place, you'll also hear the visions of the companies, entrepreneurs about what next. Mr. Minister actually referred to agriculture, agro-food. Also, what is circularity? Circularity is not simply for apparel make, making others. As also, please check out why cinema will be here on the screen, sh five short films, why a, a contemporary leading artist is sitting there, why also some of the finest crafts made by hand. Nakshikat, I don't know how many you realize, but the statement is, these are things which machine or AI can't produce. We are trying to make statements, perhaps not one single statement. So Best of Bangladesh is not an event, it's a process. It's to get going a process. One thing, let me be very brutally candid, because the Dutch challenges, I look at Mr. Omran, uh, that uh, are you open? I said that we are as open, as brutally, as candid as the Dutch, or perhaps slightly more. That's what my goalpost is. That's why I'm open. That's why I had no hesitation to walk up to and say, look, we're here. Three years on, if you check out my LinkedIn and others, we're trying to say that Bangladesh is about liberation. It was not 53 years back. It's a continuum where we are trying to say it's a li liberal values. It's a spirit of aspiration, ambition. There are a lot of things going wrong, a lot of gaps, a lot of constraints, but still we are open. And that's why we connect between Bangladesh and Netherlands. That's why we're here. It's an outrageous, ambitious statement to come into the gas hole. Not easy. This man kept bothering me for nine months, myself and my colleagues. But we took up the aspiration, the ambition. As I said, outrageous ambition. Because we want to show that we are not only for future of us, but as Mr. Balkanander said, and look at this collage here. It's all about colors, 170 million, so that's a lot of crowd. Don't get it wrong. But that's purposefully done. 17 million versus 170. But essentially, again, to underline that we connect with you for mutuality of interest, please get it right, as also for shared values and openness. So Best of Bangladesh here, essentially, as I said, we are to really urge you that uh, let us look at Bangladesh. Vice Minister had a fantastic, exciting conversation with the ministers to underline that we are beginning with few sectors, April is there, but how do we go to the next one? Because circularity is coming, net zero world is coming, but also to the other sectors like water. Water is business, agriculture and agro-food, as also digital, as also found the finest crafts which are on display here. So it's a microcosm of a part of the world called Bangladesh who are trying to come. Again, a people. Look at it as a people, try to understand the DNA and uh, see uh, how we can work together for the evergreen vision of shared prosperity through shared responsibility. Thank you.